Hello, possums. It's another episode of Over Underrated with me, Babs, my co-host Fran, and this week, special guest Bradler Barron from the Album Concept Hour podcast, which Fran and I have guested on before, talking about Kid A by Radiohead. But we have forced Brad to not talk about an album today. We have forced him to make two five-track playlists, and we've headed back to Australia with him to discuss Jet as his overrated pick and King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard as his underrated pick. So sit back, enjoy, crack open a can of Fosters, put on your cork hat, and dismantle the offensive Australian stereotypes with me and the boys. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah, what are we calling this podcast? <laughs> Was it over underrated? Over underrated. Sous évalué. Il va Welcome to another episode of Over Underrated, a music podcast with Fran and Babs. I am Babs, and this is Fran. How are you, Fran? I am Dandy. Um, it's interesting doing a podcast on a Saturday afternoon. Indeed. Behind the curtain, F you guys. <laughs> we normally record weekday evenings, but due to uh, time differences, geographical differences, uh, we are we are recording on a Saturday. Not because the theme is Melbourne, Australia, but uh, you will find out why. Um, But how are you doing, Babs? I am hungover. Uh, This is the first podcast record that I'm doing hungover. (laughs) Yes. Uh, As I mixed a little bit too much last night. I went a bit too giddy. I have a cup of tea, uh, a lemonade and a water to keep me going. But yeah, I'm I'm much more with it than I was when I woke up this morning, thankfully. But yeah, I have quite a busy day ahead of me. So I'm really trying to to keep it together and be very professional, especially because, uh, you know, we have someone else on today. (laughs) Have you had any music playing to soothe your head? Uh, yes, I have. So I don't know if you saw, but the Mobos came out, the, oh. the nomination. And what, a band we've discussed here before, Nova Twins, they had lobbied Mobos to ask them to add an alternative act mm-hmm. uh, category, you know, for, for rock music. And not only were they successful, but they're nominated in it. And I was looking at all the acts nominated in, in it. And I know all of them apart from one, Kid Bookie, who I went to listen to. And he has a very interesting song with uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot so I really recommend checking out the the other acts so it's Big Joni, Bob Villain, Kid Bookie, Loathe, Nova Twins and Skunk and Nancy. It'd be quite a brave move to not give them the award. It's, uh, you, to Nova Twins or Skunk and Nancy you mean? <laughs> to Nova Twins. Well, I, 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 idea. I think Skunk and Nancy <laughs> to be fair like they've been going for a while but yeah how about you? Um, I've been listening to all of the cool bands uh, so uh, Razorlight and my uh, cool mm-hmm. hip band I've listened to this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've not listened to Rose like for probably 20 years. Since they came out, basically. Well, yeah, maybe. And I thought I'd give them another go. Yeah, they're quite good, aren't they? Um, yeah, they've got and, and they feel like they, they, they seem to have, to be hated on quite badly. I and, think it's Johnny Barella's yeah. an asshole is the, is the problem. And I think it was the look that he took. There was that album cover where he was wearing like a pearl necklace and just staring quite sinisterly into the camera and people <laughs> have you never had a pole him. necklace moment uh i mean not not one that i'm fa- pole <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like that that means something else uh, <laughs> but, but in, a, in a literal sense no i have not put on my grandmother's pole necklace and decided to pose in front of the camera i i have not watching the loo through meet young blood documentary i mean young blood is, is a lot worse than johnny so far Oh, on, I, qu- on... I quite like Young Blood. Oh, I, 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 I was grimacing all from, all the way through. Well, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but... Uh... It's quite awkward. But anyway, we're not alone. Because today we have a Brad LeBaron from the Album Concept Hour. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing all right. I'm really excited to uh, be on your guys' podcast. What's going on? We're very happy to have you. Have you been listening to anything beyond the uh, the two acts that we're discussing today? uh mostly the second one mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. i've been on a real uh well we'll get to it chet and king gizzard but uh i've been on a real king gizzard kick so a lot of king gizzard still uh for about the last month for me i mean <laughs> i understandably so given the output yeah. but yes yeah, we, yeah. We well will because of that. what i do it's also kind of homework mm-hmm. uh so yeah yeah a lot of a lot of that have you seen any concerts recently where where you are at all uh, I actually just went to a uh, concert called the uh, Wisconsin Doomed and Stoned Festival. Uh, Wisconsin's the state I'm from, and nice. uh, so that was a lot of like doom metal um, and um, you know a bit of uh, southern rock, you know, uh, okay. and uh, 
and a lot of uh, legal uh, cannabis products. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah is it, it, it legal it, in it Wisconsin? Uh, no, but uh, the, there's all all the different. There's a bunch of different uh, ways that people get around it. There's like the, the there's Delta Eight uh, THC and there's CBD and there's right. a, every every like year there's like a new uh, uh, <laughs> cannabis adjacent product that they're trying to kind of push. So yeah, it's it's a very strange uh, place, in Wisconsin, just because the the legality is not here yet. Do you have any bands that you'd recommend? Because I have found that i quite enjoy a bit of stoner metal or stoner gaze like mm, um yeah. true widow or electric wizard oh but yeah electric wizard's great electric wizard is really great but i haven't yeah. gone be i don't know much beyond that so are there any bands that you think you know i absolutely should listen to in that genre and also were there any standout bands in the festival that you saw that you'd recommend uh, i think sleep is probably yeah. uh, the big one um you know they're mm -hmm. they're one of the big inspirations in the genre and uh I guess if you're kind of trying to get into it, I'd start with their newer album from the 2000s, uh, came out within the last 10 years, um, before going to their masterpiece, which is uh, Holy Mountain, um, or Dope Smoker. Uh, there's a couple different titles for it, but that one's like one long jam song, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably a little inaccessible if you're not used to it. Uh, so yeah, again, I start with the the two thousands because it's a little more condensed, you mm -hmm. know. I've definitely saved a few songs by Sleep. I am <laughs> typing it quickly into Spotify. Oh no, I, it's taking me to a sleep playlist rather than <laughs> going yeah, to that's the, where that's I want to go. The problem with <laughs> Sleep is is because of the title, it's hard to to look up. <laughs> There's a band from from the Nauties called A. And I think Google destroyed mm -hmm. their career. Just yeah, a? the worst, Just the a. worst oh possible name. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wonder if they're thinking about that when their name, like, did they? They were like, "I want to be the like hardest to search." It, well, it, but of they, all the this bands. is like the late nineties. They probably thought about like the CD rack, thinking, "Oh, we'll be the first exactly. on the rack," oh, not yeah, knowing that true. in ten years' time it would be the worst name ever. Until yeah. until AA Whoa. comes out, <laughs> and then they're they're in front of them. Well, so. we know the AA sessions, mm -hmm. but that's a bit easier to, to Google. So yeah, uh, Brad, I actually have Dope Smoker saved. That's the, the only song Excellent. of theirs that I have. So I will I yeah. will maybe go back there because clearly if I saved it, I liked it on uh, on first listen. But yeah, what was your favorite band in the festival that you that you saw? Oh, uh, well, I got to give it to my friends uh, Cold Black River uh, that played. Oh. Um, they're uh, uh, kind of a southern metal, uh, doom metal kind of sound. And right from Wisconsin, too. But uh, we are not in Wisconsin or the UK or, or Brussels today. We no. are in Melbourne, Australia. That is the mm -hmm. theme. And Brad, who have you picked as your overrated act today? Overrated. Uh, so uh, my overrated act is going to be uh, the 2000 sensation Jet. <laughs> <laughs> um, they uh, they came out with an album called Get Born uh, when I was in uh, high school that just, you know, took over the charts. It was all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I, I never quite got into them the way that that i was supposed to or whatever so mm -hmm. i'm gonna say overrated for this band uh mm -hmm. for the next half hour or so here <laughs> yeah so reading up on jet it does seem that maybe they were bigger in the u.s than mm -hmm. i thought because i don't know about mm -hmm. you friend but i truly only associate them with their biggest hit which we're going to talk about but from reading mm -hmm. about um how big they were in the US, like they, it wasn't just that song, right? It is some of the songs you've picked on the playlist and beyond, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, most of it, um, I think, well, actually all of it would be from the Get Born CD. Like, I don't hear any of these other uh, songs that I saw on other CDs as like single, I don't hear them on the radio, you know. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you hear Jet, it's going to be from Get Born. So um, yeah, three of the three of the songs I've chosen are from that album. So, 
Fran, are you jet set or a jet cynic? <laughs> well, I have never seen jets live, although I feel like I should have. I think they were kind of at a lot of festivals. They're kind of high up, so I knew they were pretty big. Mm-hmm. They were maybe like second yeah. build around the mid noughties And yeah, obviously, you know, I going to be my way was everywhere on every TV show, every film, every computer every game. It was, I, th- I think uh-huh, that's why uh-huh, they were so uh-huh. big in America, because I think a couple of these songs were on like some big TV. TV shows and films that's kind of oh, aided absolutely. them but yeah just but, but you know obviously i was what maybe 22 or 23 when it came out so i was mm-hmm. quite aware of the bands they were imitating maybe if i was younger and hadn't heard of like mm-hmm. the who the Rolling stones and all the biggest bands in the world i might have thought oh uh-huh. my god they're amazing but it, you felt instantly hmm this thing seems quite familiar so i never really bought yes. into it i, I I never hated on them because, you know, the, the songs were fine. Like, Are You Gonna Be My Way, I guess, in the indie club, you know, it was, it was fine to dance around to, but I couldn't take them seriously enough because I thought they were too retrograde, unfortunately. Yeah, I think you are you are getting to exactly what I, my kind of thesis is for this band uh, and why they're overrated because, like, that's... Uh, uh, every so many years in the U.S., it seems like we find a band that is reminiscent of the Beatles Mm -hmm. and we put them on a pedestal. (laughs) And I think this is another one of those groups that we just threw up on a pedestal because they have a Beatles sound and, you know, people with money know that Mm -hmm. sells. Um, And uh, yeah, that's part of, that's exactly why I think that they're overrated in general is that I was raised in a Beatles family so <laughs> makes it sound I like was... a cult. <laughs> I was <raised laughs> we were very happy. <laughs> well, you know, you're 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 either raised in a Beatles family or a Beach Boys family or, or a Stones uh, family. Or a Stones yeah. family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Um and uh I was of the Beatles family, so all of this just was kind of cringe to me. Like mm-hmm. it just cause it was so obviously like they want to be the Beatles, they worship the Beatles. And they, you know, want to be the second coming of the Beatles. So that's my biggest beef. They are named after the Paul McCartney song Jet as well. So I mean the yeah. cards are not the cards are on the table there. They are saying, Hey, look, we do like old music guys. The cover of the album is a ripoff of uh of uh, uh what, Revolver, I think it is, where they're all hand drawn. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So ten years before we had a racist doing a similar thing. Yeah, yeah. The fans that I'm definitely going to mention. Yeah, I think when I when you first put this forward, I was like, yeah, let's go for it. But I'm like, is this is this a worthy band to talk about? Because for me, they're a one hit wonder, right? So I was mm-hmm. like, well, mm-hmm. to call a band overrated, I mean, you can call them overrated as in, wow, they had that one hit and it was everywhere. But looking yeah. into them, I mean, they've supported the Stones, Bruce Springsteen, Oasis, mm-hmm. Green Day. I think from reading about it, I think the Stones called them up to have them support, which is is kind of crazy. And during yeah, a show yeah. in, at the MCG in 2005, the lead singer said he considered Jet to be up there with the greatests with fucking Lennon and the Stones. And it's like, all right, mate, calm down. Oh my God. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that kind of comes through in the music. Absolutely, uh, really, it does. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, coming into this, I didn't know, I think, most of the playlist. Um I, I didn't know that, that, yeah, they'd supported all these bands. I found it interesting to read that they they talk about this Australian band called UMI mm. as being one of the biggest influences. Okay. Do you know them, Fran? I, I had heard the name of them. I read that same article, I guess, and I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, UMI. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of the songs. Because okay. yeah, what, what was interesting is they said, like, oh, Hi-Fi Way by them was the most important album from, of my generation. I think everyone our age who played guitar, uh, very influential. It was the record that made you realize you could be in an Australian band, you didn't have to be a grunge band, and you didn't have to be influenced by American bands. So I was like, okay, like definitely one to check out. But uh, a fact that I absolutely loved is that, so there's two brothers in the band, Nick and Chris, and their uncle Eugene is in a satirical rock band called TISM. And his so his name is Eugene Sester, I guess, but his his stage name is Eugene de la Hot Crabun. <laughs> that really made me laugh. Um, so so nice. yeah, they they broke up in 2012. They reformed in 2016, touring with Bruce Springsteen, Madness. Mm-hmm. And then you know they've d- done a few things here and there. But yeah, I kind of had no idea that they were so successful. And for such a long time, I really thought it was Get Born, and then they imploded. But no, they they've had more success yeah. since then. 
they had like you know there we will get to it with um you know a couple of the later tracks like i think those did chart you know mm -hmm. um but uh yeah they, their their fan base was pretty set from uh get born yeah. um which is their first album mm -hmm. which is so like they kind of started with everything you know mm -hmm. uh which is uh i think not a great way to start a band you know mm -hmm. i know that that's what you probably want as a band but Honestly, I think you need a few albums to kind of get out the cringy stuff, you know? Uh, it's and also a lot of pressure that, so. when you're so young, <laughs> right? Like I was yeah, listening yeah. to um, a podcast this morning, Adam Nutter, uh, which Fran will know because he is a guitarist in the music, another difficult mm -hmm. to Google band <laughs> these days. And they, they do talk about that in the in the mm -hmm. interview. Um, and he was saying, he's like, yeah, we were 18 year old kids and we were being yeah. put. And I think when that happened, doesn't surprise me that Nick said, you know, that very big headed thing, because if you're very successful from your first album, you just presume that that's it. Like, okay, well, this is now the norm. And going yeah, forward, yeah. yeah, we're all going to be really successful. Uh -huh. so. I'm the shit. Yeah, I am the shit. <laughs> but let's, let's find out if they're the shit. So, yeah, I was uh, going to say, the first track, uh, yeah. uh, speaking of all that, um, <laughs> we start with Are You Going to Be My Girl? You know, this is probably the, the biggest uh, uh, charting single that they have. This is probably no the one. Uh, is that the one that you were thinking of as their? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are You Going to yeah. Be My Girl? Not awful, you know, not a, not an awful track by any means, but uh, it's kind of laced with that uh, gross Maroon 5 energy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> that is like, it, it's... I don't know. Throughout the album, I guess you you feel this like um, you know just just misogyny that comes from a young man's perspective, you know, that doesn't under you know maybe doesn't understand women yet, and he's just he's uh, uh, I don't know he's just putting in this just I don't know gross energy. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Maroon Five energy uh, as a, as a okay. description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. That's a real specific, like, uh, hard to, to pin down. It's like, I could see where this is, like, attractive and interesting for some people, but it's also, like, it's really cringe, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Indeed. Could you get away with that lyric in maybe 2003? And also, because he's into old-fashioned bands, old, the 60s would always say, sing about my girl, and, you know, come on, yeah. come on, girl, get into my car, that kind of vibe. So uh -huh. one of these kind of, you know, been influenced by the old-fashioned bands. I mean, even the big black boots, long brown hair, talking about boots, I feel that that's very retro. Mm. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I think he is trying to be, like, like retro, like, like, like you're saying, like a 50s or 60s uh, uh, tune. Mm -hmm. um and in this track he definitely like walks that line but then he gets to like cold hard bitch or whatever and it's like yeah, yeah. I, feel that, like I mean that's even to, worse it <laughs> starts to, <laughs> to, to lean into the other direction but fran what what do you think of this song like uh is it maroon five energy <laughs> or, or is that unfair <laughs> so um obviously I'm a big, big fan of maroon five no um <laughs> yeah it's hard to say because yeah when it came out it it, it was per it was perfectly fine and you would yeah, dance yeah. around to it, but you, you instantly know, okay, yeah. is this You Can't Hurry Love or is this Lost for Life? They're the two kind of songs mm -hmm. that it basically st steals from. But it's hard, isn't it? Because if, if you borrow the best parts of songs in the past 30 years, you're going to have a decent song. Um, so yeah. is, it, is, it, are they, is it too easy to do this? So someone maybe have told them, maybe maybe yeah. find your own sound, guys, before you do this. I, I think like most like new bands will kind of like show the influences quite early on and then after a while you then find your own sound and it feels like yeah, yeah, maybe absolutely. they needed two more years to find the real jet before just them um, doing almost yeah. cover songs if that makes sense so yeah um, but that's exactly what I think yeah a lot of people are influenced by the Beatles just because mm -hmm. of the fact that they're old and they were one of the most you know biggest popular sensations to happen Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah yeah it's when you get to that like oasis or like this where it's like a little too close that exactly. it's like it, it starts to be feeling as original you know did you even read that billy preston featured on the album as in like no. as in no. from you know um let it be the the um get back oh uh, yeah that guy yeah, oh my yeah. god he, that, yeah yeah that, that guy. guy he played he plays he's, he's he plays organ on three songs on the day bro <laughs> So that's when he wanted okay, some more so, <laughs> Beatles influence. So that they they felt like 
like justified then. Yeah. In I their in their hero worship. Mm. I understand I understand it's a little bit more now. Yeah. Like if he was in the room, I'd like it'd be harder to not lean that direction, I suppose. But yeah, I I haven't heard this song in years just because it was so goddamn overplayed, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't sought out this song, even though I agree. I think it is a good song. They're, I like the yeah. bass at the beginning, how it builds. And I think they're very clever in using the, the stop start, you know, the yeah. mm-hmm. the silence and then his voice. There's some good use of tambourine and clapping. And I, I, I still really like the, the bit where he says, well, you don't need the money with a face like that, do you? You know, I... I I uh-huh. like that delivery. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And he's got this very rock and roll, gnarly, gnarly voice. But what surprised me, so and I don't know, Fran, at least if you saw this. So this single has sold 1.3 million copies in the US since 2012. Wow. That's insane. Is it fe- <laughs> does it feature in like some sort of sporting event or something? It's in everything. I, f- I was going to say, I feel like it's in everything. <laughs> you find, you find like bits and pieces, like, They've ch- chopped this song up and thrown it in every form of commercial you can think of. Like, it's just, yeah. Either you're going to get the dink, 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 or you're going to get the, are you going to be my girl? And then, yeah. like, it's just every part of the song is everywhere. So, yeah, I, I, I understand that. It's the song equivalent of Play by My Be, <laughs> where every song was used for an advert. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. But, yeah, I, I was going to do a little quiz for you guys because uh, I yeah. found that this song was voted the 38th most, most Australian song. Uh, this, this, <laughs> 38th? 38th. So this this wow. radio station called Triple M did what they called the Aussist, Aussist 100. I'm not even going to try and do an accent. Um, and I, w- I was going to do a quiz to see the top five. But to be honest, guys, I only knew two of the of the top five songs. And I went to listen to the other three. And it's quite funny because to me, it just sounds like American rock. And now here's Triple M's top five Australian songs. Number one is Cold Chisel K San. Does that mean anything to you guys is that the song and the artist yeah so cold chisel is the artist k san spelt k-h-e-s-a-n-h is the name of the song huh. number two down under by men at work yeah, yeah, of yeah. course oh, right yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense number yeah. three jimmy barnes working class yes. man because oh, you do, you do uh, know that one. on the on the lost boys soundtrack we have in excess uh. singing with jimmy barnes singing we're gonna have a good time tonight rock and roll music gonna play <laughs> tonight and that's the only time i've ever heard of jimmy barnes <laughs> okay well now now you know another song called working class man and think about what kind of song it would sound like yes that is exactly what mm-hmm, it would sound mm-hmm. like so uh at number four great southern land by ice house i know Anyone? i know ice house but i can't name the song i can't think of the song Honestly, I'm just surprised that the top five aren't all ACDC. Songs. Well, funny you should say that, Brad, because number five, <laughs> ACDC, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. But yeah, it was quite funny because I found this on a, on a blog and they were really critical. And they, they said, and I'm going to quote, unsurprisingly, much like the countless bar- backyard barbecues, the alternative countdown soundtrack, it was a total sausage fest, mm-hmm. as in it was just men. <laughs> Akka Daka, ACDC, featured um, in that soundtrack no less than seven times which incidentally was also the same number of times that women of any kind made an appearance on the list so you know i wouldn't take it as gospel i don't know triple m i know triple j but yeah. uh but yeah there was, i mean there was a lot of an excess so fran you'd, you'd you'd be happy with that but yeah i was just like you know i thought for sure i'm gonna know so many of these songs and there were so many artists that i hadn't even heard of so an interesting yeah. one to check out yeah yeah I- i'm not really sure what the scene is like within australia you know what I mean? Because we only hear about the stuff that gets out. To I think us. it was famous pub rock was the kind of scene back in the seventies and eighties. Pub 80s. rock uh, that yeah, was like yeah. proper like you know guys in vests with pints seemed uh-huh. to be why things like ACDC were so popular. Have you guys heard of the Chats? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> they're they're uh, another younger uh, Australian group uh, that has more of an ACDC kind of flair. They actually have a song called uh, ACDC CD. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, really, just just balls to the wall energy and and yeah, good good stuff. But moving away from you know the the most Australian to what we hope is a bit less of an Australian sentiment. What's your second pick, Brad? Uh, the second pick is Cold Hard Bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, okay, so kind of continuing off of the last song, one of the lyrics we have is uh, from the last track is we ain't got much to say before I let you get away. 
because mm-hmm. uh, it's very you know important to the wording of, of his lyrics. And I mean, he only let her get away because she was with another man, right? Because God uh-huh, knows if uh-huh. there wasn't another man. Yeah, you'll notice the theme. One of the themes throughout this album is uh, he seems to be the only one with agency. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and in this track, um, you know, again, this is a very this song is like the spitting image of an ACDC mm. song. So I think this one probably represents uh, more Australian um, pride uh, as far as the composition goes. Like, as far as that goes, it's a pretty great, great track, you know. Um, but what's interesting, though, is in the lyrics, he goes kind of from, like, gaslighting her to, like, like you know, being, like, calling her a cold, hard bitch, like, saying, you know, uh, negging her, essentially, to, like saying like you know basically i do anything to to have you so he goes from like you know he goes through the whole toxic masculine sp- spectrum in this track uh <laughs> so yeah yeah I, l- mostly lyrics are what i have a problem with with this group like if it was just the the instrumentals and compositions and the lyrics were like just i don't know less in your face about this stuff it'd be fine but I've always been a lyrics guy, so whenever these tracks came on, I'd be like, "What? Who is this guy?" Like, uh, <laughs> you know. So, well, yeah. what do you guys think of this track? Well, Fran, Fran and I are famously not not lyrics guys, but uh, I mean, with a title like "Cold Heart Bitch," you can't help but listen to what <laughs> yeah, yeah. what he's got to it, say. It makes you listen. <laughs> it makes you listen. I mean, yeah. From from my side, I the first thing I wrote was ACDC ripoff. Although I I still quite like his voice, and I still like the the stop starts, and mm-hmm. yeah, it. It really seems like the misogyny is so unnecessary. You know, I can understand yeah. if you're if you're a <laughs> man it. annoyed at a woman, you might call her a cold hard bitch, right? But it's just like nothing in the lyrics. I just he doesn't make me believe in the story at all. It just seems mm. like he wants an excuse mm-hmm. to say cold hard bitch and and that's it. But uh, yeah, because it sounded cool. <laughs> I didn't watch all the music videos for all the songs we discussed today, but I did watch the music video for this song, and it was oh, actually what was that like? <laughs> it was actually entertaining so i was a bit worried right because it starts and basically it's the band getting drunker and drunker in a bar with a you know the bartender lady having a very serious face so i was like oh god is this going to be really misogynistic of like they're going to try and hit on her and she's going to reject them but no uh-huh. actually it's just kind of like them on a night out they're getting drunker and drunker and the drunker they get they start kind of hallucinating that for example like a logo on a guy's t-shirt comes to life they're looking at the jukebox and there's there's this quite funny bit where there's a female band that seems to come to life and it seems to be the band all wearing pink dresses pretending to be this kind of 70s uh <laughs> rock group so so i did yeah. enjoy that but yeah the song not so much <laughs> fran uh, i think you guys have basically said everything i was gonna say i said acdc he, he's surprisingly quite a good singer it's yeah. very much you know potatoes and great and gravy rock and roll i wonder mm-hmm. if the lyrics it's a bit like the image, because even how they looked at like, the whole like neckerchief and feathered hair, it's all much pantomime rock star. And I wonder even if, yeah. if the lyrics are also him just trying to, to write like what he thinks a rock and roll lyric should be, like saying, that's like it, saying, isn't it? cold half yeah. bitch. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. You know, like, does he actually yeah, mean yeah. it? I, who knows? I, I've, Without Yeah, I, I'm sure he, doesn't, he hasn't got a clue what he's really actually saying. So. Well, yeah, because again, they're so young. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they're still young idiots like, <laughs> young you know, idiots. like and this is the 2000s <laughs> where feminism wasn't really particularly popular was it so uh, no yeah no, it was not i can tell you as a as a, as a dude growing up <laughs> in the 2000s yeah <laughs> but so this song apparently was used in alias mm-hmm. and again jj ah. abrams contacted the band directly because he wanted them to record a song for the season four premiere uh and and this was huh. used um and moving forward with some of this i think he brings some of that again weird maroon five energy to the next track (laughs) look what you've done you know it's it's again not an awful ballad but uh going from what we're talking about with his kind of toxic mentality it it it, you know it reads like the line i read before we actually got much to say before i let you get away look what you've done you know it's it's just seems so uh um childish Mm mm-hmm but uh, yeah, this uh, to me is their attempt at like a champagne supernova <laughs> uh, type track, you know, going with the Oasis um, uh, yeah. Uh, connection. Yeah, I don't know. Just just really, uh, it felt like they made this because it need, they needed one of these in the, the album. 
you know. It's quite surprising. This is the highest charting Australian single of all time. This chart oh, really? is higher than Can you know, Be My Girl. And yeah, I mean, okay. you think that Noel Gallagher could have written this on, on the toilet. It's just like so <laughs> cliche <laughs> oasis with a Beatles piano and that sort of like Ringo drum sound. Um, uh-huh. Although it uh-huh. also sounds a little bit like uh, someone who may not be uh, big in America, but Robbie Williams kind of vibe. Okay. Yeah, uh, but what is interesting reading the YouTube comments that uh, they seem to be massive in Latin America. It's all in Spanish, so mm-hmm. I think okay. they've sold six okay. million albums. And I wonder, yeah, wow. like, I think uh, yeah, I think well, it's American South America seem to be the main the main the staples for for Jets fans. Well, that's the thing. Latin and like mm. Central America and South America are such big rock fans. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like every time a band gets big enough, they always go on a giant tour down there and always have big big crowds everywhere so like they're they're i think one of the like really uh uh uh, i guess underrated music markets out there you know but uh you always hear bands like oh man i can't wait till we can go to south america and do finally get there um because yeah they they love this stuff yeah i know like uh, i see in like iron maiden play stadiums in like argentina mm-hmm. yeah they do like the proper yeah the proper rock and roll down there but... yeah they like they like that fucking harder mm. stuff like like classic rock never like kind of took the downturn in in those places you know yeah i, I was wondering why like is it because maybe you know those pl- those are places where their more traditional music doesn't sound anything like that at all so if you want something a bit mm-hmm. harder you have to go yeah. elsewhere i i don't know i don't know people who know more about this write in <laughs> well yeah and also in 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 the u.s we like you know we're always trying to innovate and move forward and we're trying to be the uh, uh you know the, at the forefront of of everything including music you know so we're always trying to push to the next thing you know um, which is we'll get into with the King Gizzard. I think that's part of the reason they're kind of underrated at this point. I think again, very. I wrote very similar to you. I said basically sounds like Oasis ripping off the Beatles with a nicer voice, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do still like his voice. And I was yeah, I didn't know this side of them. And well, I actually think I do. I do know this song. It didn't. It sounded a bit familiar to me, but I didn't realize it was them. And you know, okay, I guess it's nice they can. You know, they can do a ballad. And that chorus does kind of get stuck in your head. That, oh, mm-hmm. look what you've done. It, but yeah. yeah, it's, again, musically not really my cup of tea. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it would have been great if it was uh, the, the first song that sounded like this ever. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> as the thousand, thousands uh, uh, song that has come out like this, it's, you know, we've, we've, we've heard it. Now, this next track we have for you guys uh, is... Uh, now this one I put on. Uh, I was going to try to rip it to shreds. I'm so but... glad that you looked up what it was about. Then. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I yeah. found out what it was about, and uh, you know I'm not going to say I love this song now because of this information, but it does uh, give me give it a few points because this is about his his dead dad. It is uh, a much deeper song than what it appears on the surface. They're still kind of like riding the beatles dicks with uh their their sound and everything and the cover of the uh of the album is reminiscent of another beatles uh, uh famous beatles picture um but uh yeah this th- this song is again i think it's it's similar to the last track it's it's just not i don't know uh, uh not a very powerful ballad but if you're a fan of them i'm sure it, it is great <laughs> yeah it's you know? it's a shame that such a cliched song uh is linked yeah. to such a horrible thing because like yeah it's got the whole like the backing singer section it's all the the fake emotional tropes you get in that sort of era uh-huh. the, the uh-huh. lyrics are kind of tired um i don't really uh-huh. hear how it's about his dad really the lyrics too much i don't i don't know yeah i missed that the video has scenes of vietnam and like yes. some sort of like is it china disaster footage i'm like what <laughs> how is this linked to anything <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very baffling. it's not very clear uh his intent in this track. And it should be for for what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, apparently Shine is is from the Shine and you create a diamond but by Pink Floyd reference. Of, but Yeah, no, and that's a that's a, mm. a part of my other problem with this album. <laughs> Fucking they can't stop like just ripping off rock motifs and like mm-hmm. oh, it's so crazy. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's a nice try, but I think maybe he could 
maybe done something better. I don't, hey, I don't mm-hmm. know, it sounds so bad. But... I mean, this is it, right? Like, so I, I went to listen to it. And then when I read the fact that, yeah, he, he said that he wrote the song through his dad's eyes, what he would say to help everyone through. So mm-hmm. I guess it's more about that than kind of him being sad about uh mm-hmm. someone being dead and but yeah, yeah honestly the second i saw it was about death i was like oh i am i am going to youtube because i'm sure that there's uh, people who are going to be moved by this and sure enough you go onto youtube and you look at the comments um yeah, yeah. and and yeah people are like oh you know this happened to me this really helped and my my favorite comment by carlos eduardo rodriguez carrillo who in spanish says someone someone please explain to me why this piece of inspiration is not a worldwide hymn and i was like wow okay carlos <laughs> that is him. woo <laughs> himno mundial so there we yeah. go <laughs> yeah, yeah but very very similar to you yeah i it, i think that's it it felt it feels a bit um uh what's the word that i'm looking for uh cynical Twee? <laughs> yeah, to, uh, to understand that joke uh, listeners go check out brad's podcast um it's like it's kind of like right can you write a song about a dead person here you go tick 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 i i think i do like the way yeah. it builds and i don't mm-hmm. mind the backing singers actually because i think it is the first song so far in this place that has that and it, it does add yeah. something but yeah. it, it does feel yeah, they're, they're trying they're trying new things you know mm-hmm. in this second album um but yeah again it's this uh, going back to what i was saying earlier it's the second album so they're still still very young still very inexperienced songwriters um you know and uh oh uh, one more thing i want to say before we get on to the next track though is this has the exact same problem as green days when september ends mm-hmm. oh that is about his dad that died as well. I did not know that. And for years, I was like, what? This song sucks. This song is the worst fucking Green Day song ever. Uh, I was, I would always rally about it. And then finally, years later, I found out, like, it's actually a very, very sad song. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay. You know what? You know what? I'm going to stop. Guys, <laughs> you heard it here first. Brad does not like rock songs about dead dads, okay? <laughs> no, that is no. not allowed. Find <laughs> a different topic. <laughs> if you're going to make a rock song about your dead dad, it better be a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God damn it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, this next track we got for Jet is... Um, this is their biggest uh, single since, uh, I think, the first album. Um, this is the one that people were talking about the mm-hmm. most from their most recent stuff. Um, it's called She's a Genius from Shaka Rock. Uh, and, you know, this is, uh, this is not, a, not a bad tune. It is, it, it's, uh, what I wrote down for my notes here, though, is back to formula. <laughs> uh, because it sounds exactly like a track that might be in Get Born, but this time with uh, what seems like random lyrics. <laughs> that don't seem to hold any weight. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems like it almost seems like an AI generated jet song <laughs> from Get Bored. You well, know, you know, it's nice that he's gone from her being a bitch to now she's a genius. So there's some, yeah, that's got true, some growth. That's got some that's, that's growth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had never heard this song before. Um, it's Australian sweaty rock and roll. I, I guess yeah. they needed a big hit. So going back to the Get Bored sound makes sense. I'm surprised it wasn't bigger because yeah. i had never heard it and it's got a pretty decent video there's money behind it um but yeah i guess oh yeah the video's pretty yeah, cool. i guess it didn't set the world alight um Babs, did you heard it uh, i hadn't heard it and um and yeah i actually thought the beginning was not your standard jet there's this kind of bass then the guitar comes in and i was quite excited and then uh-huh. it went basically into are you going to be my girlfriend? Mm. And I was like, oh mm-hmm, man, mm-hmm. like you really had yeah. an opportunity. It was, I felt almost like maybe they had something a bit different and they were like, guys, we're going to bring this to the studio. And then the record label was like, no, you shall make music exactly like you did before. No evolution. Yeah, that's what's kind of sad about it. Um, you know, any band that, that, that gets famous this early is they, they, they have this like, you know, peak that they've already experienced. And so a lot of times they, that, that they spend their whole career just chasing down that like feeling again, you know? Um, and exactly. yeah, it's, it's, it's sad when, uh, when a band takes that path, but again, you know, they got in so early and got inundated with the business end of things so early too, that, you know, I'm sure it was hard to get perspective and i mean yeah i i did enjoy this song you know like it was my second favorite after are you gonna be my girl Mm -hmm. but it's just again it's not 
it's not one that I'm dying to, to come back to. But Brad, have yeah. you heard any other songs from the album or or just this one? Because I wonder if the rest just of the album one. sounds like this. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only the only album I've heard all the way through is Get Born. All the other uh, the other tracks today, I've just uh, I just found what was like the most talked about of the other albums. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, we've all watched the music video, right? With the the woman with the hairy face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What was that about? <laughs> I don't know what any of it's about, but <laughs> I, I, I was trying to understand of like, oh, what you shouldn't judge someone by their appearance because even yeah. though they look weird, they can BMX like a demon. I, I don't, I don't. I know. thought the director had yeah. watched Team Wolf the day before, and that is inspiration. <laughs> had you, um, Brad? Had yeah. you heard about the uh, Pitchfork review for the second album? No, is that is that? Infamous oh yeah, or something? I think I have. It, yeah. Basically, okay. Okay. no text. Just a picture of a monkey pissing into his mouth and knocked out of ten. <laughs> and Jet reckoned that killed their career. Because it was just, it was just uh, literally me going around everywhere. That oh, would, okay. Because yeah. yeah. I typed in yeah. Jet and it was like Jet something something meme. And I was like, mm. what is that meme? So I'm guessing it was that, right? That's devastating <laughs> for a band. Oh yeah, people God. with you t-shirts with it on them. but like also i think the problem is they have such a gap between this album like the music had completely changed in six years that sound mm-hmm. in 2009 mm-hmm. was not cool at all so i think if they had done album after album they may have built some success but by having such big gaps yeah. like yeah. yeah they missed the boat basically so i think that hurt them yeah yeah they were on the pulse mm. for the first one and then they they kept on trying to go back to that pulse <laughs> yeah so I'm, I, yeah. even I mean, even the strokes changed the sound didn't they after a while mm-hmm. yeah but to kind of i guess wrap up unless there's, there's something else anyone wants to say you know you know I, I i do feel sorry for them like that's pretty harsh but when you go and look at their listeners they have 4.5 million monthly listeners and are you going to be my girl has had 445 million streams so yeah. even if you know Pitchfork didn't like them. They clearly have an audience, right? Like in in South America and elsewhere. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, yeah. But to ask the question, yeah, Fran, overrated. Um, yes, but I do feel a little sorry for them. Um, I watched a dog. I watched an. In- <laughs> I watched an interview. He seemed like quite a nice guy. But what was baffling? This interview was like two thousand and five, when they're you know, kind of big, and he was saying that they lose money touring. I was like, fuck Already then. me, like. That was, really yeah, money. he said he made the money what? from CD sales. I was like, how is that a thing? Because these days, it's all about making money yeah. from touring. And it's not as if they had like an yeah. orchestra with them. So I don't know. Like, maybe their manager was a massive huh. liar. I was going to say they signed some <laughs> yeah. bad deals, right? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds sketchy as hell. <laughs> yeah. It's hard because, you know, they only had the one big album. So if uh-huh, I, if, uh-huh. I, if you meet someone in the UK, they'd say that, oh, yeah, that, that band for a big four minutes. It's hard to say they're overrated because I don't know many people who are say Jet are their favourite album. Well, not from this part mm. of the world, maybe in South America, mm. apparently. But um, yeah, yeah, so it's hard for me to say that because you, you could easily walk, live your life without ever hearing anyone talk about Jet. Um, you oh, know, man. unlike, unlike Ruin 5. But <laughs> <laughs> So for me, it's hard because, yeah, I don't... Yeah, yeah. For me, they're not big enough to be declared as overrated. Yeah, I can't yeah. imagine anyone has a Jet tattoo but well, who knows? Oh, well, maybe. I, <laughs> oh, type in that hashtag well, into Instagram. Apart from that monkey. If they, <laughs> if they did, they probably have had it covered over by now. <laughs> oh, so. So, yeah. so are you kind of reluctantly calling them overrated, Fran, or are you not calling them overrated? Uh, overrated in the fact that I feel like they don't have their own sound and they got they mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. they made a lot of sales from borrowing from other artists, which is always a bit sketchy. Yeah. Um so yes, semi overrated, but not as as much as other bands we've discussed, if that makes sense. I'm on the fence, sorry. Babs? Yeah. Mm. Uh yeah, I, I'm gonna say that they're, they're overrated. I, I don't I, I don't feel so bad because yeah, I do kind of feel like they had one good song and one good sound. And while, you know, the figures show that well that was what they were most successful with and you know, when they deviated from that a little bit, they weren't as successful. I, you know, I agree that it's not like I talk about Jet all the time, but they they seem to have permeated, <laughs> they permeated into into the world of rock, and there are yeah. just so much more deserving bands who deserve those uh, yeah. four point five million monthly listeners. Like that is an awful lot, um, and you know, so you would think like, oh, 
they've got that many monthly listeners because of that sock. So like I said, are you going to be my girl has 445 million plays, but the next one has 72 million. So they still, it's, it's not just people listening to that song on a playlist. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not, I agree with you, Fran, that we've had, we've had far more overrated acts, but I, I will say that they're overrated. And then for, for me, I mean, I gotta say overrated just because, I mean, especially considering, you know, uh, uh, the, the different perspective I have being from the U S and it, being literally inundated in all sorts of things uh but it's not like people talk about jet though it's not like it's like a band that people rave about but you know it's going to be on playlists it's going to be playing at the bar it's going to be you know i'm going to hear jet songs for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> they follow you around do jets. yeah 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 uh, uh, at some point or another it will come up uh so yeah let's definitely say overrated do you listen to albums start to finish do you love concept albums Are you always the first one at a party to bring up King Gizzard? Say no more. The Album Concept Hour podcast has everything you need. We have hot takes. It's like Voltron. (laughs) It's just like Voltron. Ah. It's like Voltron with jazz. This this is emo. This is uh, this is Willie Nelson's emo trip. Bad improv attempts. That was that was. (laughs) Let's all do our best Aussie accent. Let's not. (laughs) Let's alienate all the Australians. (laughs) And sometimes we even learn something. As they listened again and again to the song in the control room, Axel started saying, "Where do we go? Where do we go now? Where do we go?" Shut up. Spencer turned down the music and said, "Why don't you just try singing that?" And thus, the last (laughs) part of the song was born. Listen to the album Concept Hour wherever you listen to podcasts. Underrated. Now, uh, yeah, uh, for the underrated act, uh, I have brought to the table King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And uh, yeah, this is my true purpose of being on the podcast <laughs> to evangelize the great, great word of King Gizzard. Uh, so yeah, very very underrated. Uh, Mel, well, I don't know, very underrated, but uh, they're they're we'll, underrated. We'll discuss. We'll discuss. We'll discuss. Yeah, we'll discuss. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they're from Melbourne, Australia. They have uh, an insanely large uh, 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 amount of albums at this point. They have twenty five for being around for like ten years, uh, and that's you know not including the like live albums and uh, 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 live DVDs and stuff like that um yeah they're they're uh the the next uh i guess uh jam bandy uh uh uh, uh, rush kind of group that exists right now in music that's my that's my short intro of king gizzard and we'll get into some of the the tracks i yeah i love that short pitch so i mean obviously i'd heard of them and i presume you had too fran right Mm -hmm. i've always been a little bit apprehensive because i knew the amount of music they made mm. and it's like yeah. uh, a bit like guided by voices it's like there's too fucking yeah. many songs like where does someone start like it's too so i've always been a bit scared yeah I'm not scared but like you know thinking like do i have time to get into this band like like can i can i listen to 20 <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know yeah. so sometimes uh-huh. you kind of avoid it because you think ah, oh, it's like when you go on netflix and the uh, uh you know it's just like 12 seasons it's like ah, oh, i can't I can't handle 12 seasons, you know? <laughs> yeah, you just look, yeah. you look at it. Ah, oh, too much, too much. Ooh. So that maybe that's wise. Bitments. But like, yeah, I knew a lot of um, friends who say they're a brilliant live band. And a lot of people say they're the best live band I've ever seen. Go and see King Gazard. And I think I saw them on Glastonbury uh, a couple of times. But I wouldn't, if someone asked mm-hmm. me, I wouldn't be able to think of a song. I kind of vaguely mm-hmm. knew the sound was, the, was kind of like a, psych- a yeah. psychedelic chaos. Um, but I that's a that's a good description. But I wouldn't be able to, like to, to to hum a song by King Gizzard. So this was mm-hmm. kind of like an, an introduction to myself. And as per usual, yeah. I watched some documentaries and then thought, "Good God, there is a lot going on <laughs> with this band." So I feel like yeah. I should probably have, have needed a year to properly research this band. So <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, did 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 you uh, did you watch the YouTube videos about the Gizverse? Did you go that people deep, mentioned or... it and yeah, yeah, 
And I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah, there's a good five hours of that explanation <laughs> yeah. by now. And there's, uh, there's like bootleg albums and all sorts of things going uh-huh, on. Like, uh-huh. what is the actual canon of King Gazard? What is like, <laughs> it's like, oh, there's lots of different members who have side projects. Are we going to name what genre? Uh-huh. Is Stu McKenzie the main guy behind it? Or are they all involved? He's probably the yeah. most well-known. Yeah. 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 So is he, but, would he, people yeah. say he's a genius. Would you describe him as a genius? I think so. Okay, that's, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Babs, would you describe him as a genius? Uh well, I well, I I, I think difficult <laughs> to tell if, after after well, yeah, like you, five years. Just <laughs> being introduced to it, so yeah, it's well, you, you, yeah. Well, so in 2017, I okay. clearly listened to Flying Mike Returnal Banana because I saved three songs from the that saved Nuclear Fusion, Sleep Drifter, and Rattlesnake. I have mm, absolutely mm-hmm. no memory <laughs> of what they sound like, <laughs> and I actually didn't want to listen to them before. Uh, going on your plate so I think I must have heard about them in 2017 and been like who are this band let's Did go and check out someone maybe corner you at a party and start no. talking to you about microtonal tuning thankfully no okay. it was me myself and I I think okay, it must okay, have okay. been music press is, is what I'm thinking reading about them in, yeah. the, in the music press but exactly yeah. like Fran when you look at their output so they've been together since 2010 and they've released is mm-hmm. it yeah, 23, 25 studio 25 albums 25 or 26 at this point yeah so Sparks, who Fran and I have talked about before, they've been together oh, since Sparks. 1966, and they've only released 27 albums, right? So it's just like, think think of the time span. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> And yeah, yeah. think it's... about how Sparks is so prolific, and yet these guys are on, a, on another level. They've, they've released five albums this year alone. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was so glad, Brad, that you, you picked them, because I'm like, this is exactly the kind of band I need someone to take me by the hand and mm-hmm. guide me through it because yeah, yeah. As... and that's that's why i'm here <laughs> thank you so much for being our spiritual guide today Fran, <laughs> for in, King in, in the gizmos <laughs> which is yeah, yeah, new yeah, to yeah. me and it's funny to say yeah 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 it's fun <laughs> but yeah i think i i remember it being kind of like it's some kind of psychedelic garage rock and i think garage mm-hmm. rock is actually maybe the genre i like the most that i know the least about right mm. like yeah. I love a Jay Retard. I love so many, so many other bands, but I feel like I don't have a grasp on that genre and who the main players are in the same way. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm mm. sure that we'll be talking about lots of them when we talk about the the music from from King Gizzard. But yeah, really, I think that never have I been happier to to have a band pick that someone's going to tell me about because. I, I mean, this this is the thing, right? Like, Brad, you, you I know that you you like to listen to albums. So when, when you listen to music, you listen to mostly albums, yeah, right? Yeah, full albums, yeah. Rather than playlists. Mm-hmm. I think maybe Fran and I are more playlist people these days, even though, we, I mean, mm-hmm. I previously was an album person, and I imagine you were too, yeah. Fran, right? That's correct. Yeah. I think in, in the streaming age of, you know, whether it's Netflix, yeah. like you say, or, or music, when you're confronted with it, you're just like, but, but there's so many other things that I, I uh-huh, want to listen uh-huh. to. Can I commit to this? So glad you're here. Our wise leader, please take thank, it away with you, your playlist. You. <laughs> well, uh, so I, I, I've thought a lot about this playlist because I want it to be, I want it to be an introductory thing for anyone that wants to jump into the Gizverse. Cause like it, like you guys are saying, it is intimidating. There's a lot of music, a lot of genres, a lot of members, <laughs> you know. Uh, I didn't even so... bother. I did. I was like, someone else will look this up. Thank you very well, much. Well, they yeah. started off with seven, and then they finally whittled it down to six. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, they had two drummers for a long mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I, I picked these songs uh, to kind of take you through the kind of different sounds that they have, and I also specifically did not choose uh long jammy songs there's there's a lot of tracks of theirs that are 10 minutes plus i thought that was probably i should just you know leave that for another day um (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. i had the same problem when i was on a podcast to talk about king crimson because they're another band that gets real jammy i got into king crimson because of my love of king gizzard that's part of the thing is uh, king gizzard has kind of uh uh brought me to a lot of different new bands uh, from just listening to it and finding out maybe what their influences are and everything. Um, so, yeah, they've been hugely influential on me and my uh, just general uh, music listening. Um, I'm aware of at least a handful of Australian acts now, but still not an expert. Like, I'm kind of uh, 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 with you, uh, Babs, where it's like I seem to like a lot of garage rock, but I don't fully understand the genre. So 
I'm kind of coming to it uh, 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 band by band. Um, like, I don't know, the Chats, what I, which I mentioned, that might be garage rock, but I... I, I... I just think it's one of those genres as well that's it's been going for so long and it gains resurgence in popularity every yeah. now and again, right? Like, yeah. they called what the Strokes and the White Stripes were doing the garage rock revival. Mm. But I yeah. feel like even though I was very young when I got into it there, I, I apart from maybe like MC5, I, I don't know who the originators were, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it seems like a pretty broad genre, too. Hmm. So, um, But yeah, so this first track we got um, is uh, from uh, one of their first albums that really kind of broke into, I guess, kind of the mainstream, but they've never quite been mainstream. Um, I think this might have been one of the first ones on a, uh, a release on an American record label, though. Um, but this is from I'm In Your Mind Fuzz, and it's Slow Jam 1. Um, and, uh, part of the reason I picked this one to start out with is it's, uh, I think it's single material. Like, I think that you could hear this, uh, on a, a radio perhaps, you know what I mean? Um, what did you guys think of, uh, this track? Well, this was unexpected because I was waiting to be having my mind blown away and this is not a mind blower. Mm -hmm. Um, no, no, no this, not this, I guess, I mean, it's called slow jam. Um, it's, it's got like an echoey bluesy kind of vibe. I couldn't hear mm -hmm. two drummers. Is that? Yeah, they have two drummers at this point, but, um, they're, they're not like always fully like, okay. uh, you know, going all slipknot. So them. one's maybe um, just doing a maraca. Um, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's a really great staggering guitar line which I, which comes in. So the, the guitar mm -hmm. line for me worked, but that, yeah, for, otherwise it was a bit of a flop, unfortunately. Okay. But not not yeah, to yeah. say that the whole playlist, because each song yeah, is yeah, going to yeah. be completely different. But yeah, but this... Well, yeah, I wanted to ease you into King Gizzard with this track, because I didn't want to just jump in with the, the second one. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? But yeah, it, it, yeah it, it didn't do much for me, um, Babs. Okay. Yeah, I was really surprised as well because that was it. I was expecting psychedelic garage rock, and I called this a less, a muffled, less electronic tame impala for me. Another Australian that's band. That's fair. That's that's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I thought it was groovier and poppier than, than yeah. what I was expecting, yeah. and I was surprised as well that it was two minutes fifty four because I was thinking, of course, like a band with such such an output would only have long songs. So yes, thank you very much, Brad, for for picking shorter songs. <laughs> yeah, they do have a lot of long songs. They, I'm, um, I'm sure they do. But... <laughs> We will not be talking about them today. <laughs> but yeah, I think, and kind of, you know, wait, I think this was my least favorite song from, okay. from the playlist yeah, because, yeah. because it didn't blow me away. That's it. I, very similar to what Fran said. I enjoyed the instrumental yeah. ending and the kind of one note guitar solo that, that yeah. leads into it. I thought that was, that was yeah. quite interesting. Um, and yeah, it, it seems to be the first album to chart on the ARIA charts, which I think are the, the Australian yes. ones at 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, first of many for these guys. But um, yeah, I, I think that I, I uh, when I first heard this track, I probably had the same uh, uh, response as you guys. Um, but uh, this one uh, I included on the list because it's become a fan favorite. Um, and it is one that, uh, you know, I think, I think partially maybe because of live, uh, mm -hmm. uh, plays of it, um, and, uh, being one of their few softer ones, um, you know, to, to, to start out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one that, that has grown on me too, you know, like the first, again, the first time I heard it, I was like, eh, it's fun, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, it's one that as you get through the discography, you almost, it, you, you almost, uh, um, want to listen to it for a simpler time. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know I mean? that makes sense, yeah. You, the slower song in the set so you can have a breather and not be jumping up. Yeah, and yeah, down all yeah. The time. Um, and I thought for maybe outsiders, this might be a little more accessible. Yeah, the, the first several albums are really in that garage rock vein, psych rock vein, um, and uh, it isn't really until this next track that they go, they, they find, they kind of find their footing. So... Um, yeah, the next track I chose was Robot Stop from Nanagon Infinity. And uh, there's a thing that uh, people say in the, uh, you know, King Gizzard community and on this album, Nanagon Infinity opens the door. And uh, <laughs> what that means for Giz fans is that this is the moment that King Gizzard became, like, their own sound, their own direction that wasn't necessarily uh, uh fully inspired by the the movements around them you know 
um, at least from from my perspective on it. But uh, yeah, what did you guys think of this uh, this track? Though it's a real, real, real uh, left turn from the previous track. So this is what I thought the whole playlist would be like. Am I right in saying that this album is supposed to be one song? Kind of. Yes, that's the the theme of this album is that it is one song that can loop. Mm-hmm. So you can listen to it infinitely. Which is why they mentioned the album, I guess, and the lyrics and stuff. But yeah, it's got frantic mm-hmm. guitar lines. It's got maybe Mars Volta vibes. It's got like oh, a, it's got like a weird breakdown section. And is it some yelping happening? Some harmonicas zooming and out constantly. Uh-huh. Um, it's got uh-huh. like some blistering guitar work. I said that if Guitar Hero was still around, this would be the end of the game song. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. trying to, to do Great that. Back. Shout. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, the whole the whole yeah. album yeah. just yeah. Uh, start to finish. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's uh, an overload, which I wanted to happen, and I mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed this track. Um, and this is this yeah. is what I expected yeah. to, to happen, and I was happy to find it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I read and I read um previously people say that yeah that the they kind of be- begin in 2014 as a before that they kind of find their feet, and I guess by now they have found their yeah feet. yeah. Because they're like a group, they're basically a, uh, they were a group of just, you know, dudes that were friends and mm-hmm. they kind of created this collective just to create music together and to have a space to do that. And then, you know, started obviously making music. Are you a fan of the video for this? Uh, yeah, yeah. I love all the, I love, I, I'm a fan of all their videos, honestly. Like I put them in the, on in the background sometimes just just to be on because they're they're so their music videos are very very good like they really like go out for all of their music videos even if they're like low low fidelity they're mm. super fun it feels like you need some 3d glasses to like watch it yeah, you know, right? to be part of yeah, the, there's a lot yeah, yeah there's a lot of things yeah. flying towards you um yeah. <laughs> babs what are your thoughts I absolutely love this song. This is exactly like you, Fran, what I thought it was going to be. Fast Garage mm-hmm. Rock in 7-4. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the instrumental bits, the voices when they harmonize. And uh, yeah, I did think, is this the ultimate concept album? Because that's, as, as Brad said, it's it's designed mm. to be played on an infinite loop. And because this album is not on Tidal, shockingly, so, so many no. other albums are, I went to see if it was on Bandcamp. And on Bandcamp, there are comments where it's like, oh, you know, I got really sick of listening to this album in like the fourth hour. Like lots of jokes like that, um, <laughs> which, was, which was very funny. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, what I really liked was, I, don't, I feel like Psychedelic Rock is something that can take itself too seriously, but they, oh. they do not. You know, in the, mm-hmm. the music video is so much fun. And the lyrics are, limber, limber up, time is up, fuck shit up, don't forget about it. You yeah, know, it just, yeah. Yeah, and I, what I really enjoyed as well is, you know, this, this song is called Robot Stop. And normally any song about a robot is got some kind of electronica, but somehow they've they've made oh, yeah. a song about robots, which is guitar focused, but it still feels like this kind of chaotic technological overload feeling. So, so yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we spoke about Sparks. Edgar Wright, who directed Sparks Brothers, said that it's one of his favorite albums of all time. He said, you could be forgiven for thinking you were hearing one long extended track, but my God, does it rock. <laughs> and my favorite comment from on, on the video, because uh, I've got ADHD and so does Brutal Bun- Bunny, apparently, because they said, me and my mom both have ADHD. Brackets, she somehow got it way worse than I do. And the best thing that helps me is music. This exact album is maybe the best album ever for it because it just doesn't fucking end. <laughs> anyway, I sent it to her and she's over the moon about it too. Shout out to King Liz, shout out to King Giz at Saving Lives Out Here. This song slaps. So, making so many people happy. Would you say the whole album is this kind of vibe or... Yeah, like it's it's all you know a similar vibe, uh, and they it, you know they'll go in different directions. Like you can definitely you know uh, distinguish songs from each mm-hmm. other, uh, mostly uh, more through like lyrical content, you know, because there's like kind of uh, uh, things that they repeat in uh, each song a lot. Um, People Vultures is probably one of the more uh, one of the most popular ones, and you should definitely check out the video if you like good fun music videos because that was one of their their craziest. Uh, but, um, yeah, this, it's, 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 uh, one continuous thing. Um, and, uh, one of the special things about it is that I think this is when they came into the consciousness for, uh, uh, a lot of people in like the U S because I heard it on college radio, 
I heard someone talking about this crazy idea. This is just, oh, this is an album that goes, you know, forever and it never stops. Here's a track from it. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this just came out? I don't understand. Um, and then, um, yeah, I had, I had several friends that got into it around the same time. Um, they did some KEXP performances mm-hmm. uh, from that, you know, uh, Washington channel that's really puts out really, really good live performances. Yeah. And uh, I think that's when, like, the first wave of, like, American fans started. And, uh, yeah, this is this came out in 2016. And it, <laughs> considering it says Nonagon Affinity opens the door, it was very, very prescient because the next year they put out five albums. <laughs> so God. it was, it was for, for the next, like, you know, year and a half from when this one came out, it was just nonstop King Gizzard. Like, if you were just becoming a fan, it was amazing. Um, which, you know, this year they just did it again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was an, it was another year that was like a very, very uh, heavy, you know, you're just following everything that's happening. If you're a King Gizzard fan, you're never, uh, 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 you're always busy. That's um. it. I think <laughs> it's one of those things. I'm, I'm kind of jealous of people who are fans of artists with such a big discography because I'm like, you're always going to be looking forward to stuff rather than, than seeing it as like a, another thing on the on the to-do list. Going to 2017, actually, um, I, uh, I decided that going from Robot Stop, I wanted to go to um so that was like the kind of the beginning of their like year of five albums kind of i know it's 2016 but that was really all the albums in 2017 have some similarities to uh nonagon infinity and they throughout all their albums they have licks that like you know transpire between tracks um but yeah this next track is from their collection of songs called gumboot soup that was their final album of 2017 uh released like I don't know, a few days before the end of the year. Um, And this is the first track out of that album. And what's special about this album is that it, it, it compiles all the stuff that didn't fit in the last like five records, basically. So um, because they did so many, they had a lot on the cutting room floor and they put it all together in one album. And um, this is always the album that I recommend that people listen to when, if they want to get the wide breadth of what King Gizzard can do, because it is, you know, each track is a different genre. Each track is a, in a way, this actually feels more, this album feels more like a a classic rock album because it's not as focused Mm -hmm. as their albums normally are. Because they're usually hyper-focused on a like particular goal for an album, you know? But yeah, I this is my favorite album by King Gizzard, hands down. Probably still, it, it's hard because there's a lot of good stuff now. But I like to give like some space between when something came out before I say it's like the best thing, you know. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think of uh, Beginner's Luck? I went on Metacritic to see like what the press thought was the best album, and what is surprising is with the amount of albums they've made, none of them are under seventy percent average. Which is mad to have no like duds out yeah. of all those albums. Is like all the all the output mm-hmm. is like higher than most of the bands I love. So that is that mm-hmm. was spectacular. And um, yeah, critics absolutely love King Gizzard. Mm-hmm. Like, like they've not had yeah. like their what the fuck is happening here album, you know. So that's, that's surprising, but they can do twenty five and still be going. And you know, most bands I like do three albums with people like, and the rest of shit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this was a light relief after the head fuck off the previous track. Um, we've got flutes, acoustic guitar, like a funky bass line. It kind of reminds me of Jeffro Toll. I don't know if you know Jeffro Toll okay. too well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of like dad rock. Um, there's some sort of weird mm-hmm. freaky guitar comes at the end <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and takes over. Yeah. <laughs> so not a bigger fan as this. Uh, uh, of uh-huh. the previous track. Um, but yeah, but like I said, no, it's interesting to hear what else they can offer. I think I'm a big fan of their their soft stuff because mm-hmm. they do it so little. <laughs> so mm. whenever whenever it does happen, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> is it a flute I can hear? Is is it is there someone playing a flute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Stu plays flute, um, and then um, uh, uh, Ambi is the guy that plays the harmonica. 
I think I know. I saw the, a live um, set, and he's got like you know how people have like ten guitars. He has like a yeah. whole rack of harmonicas. Was that enough? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's a pro. Yeah, I know, like, right? he's, got, he's got all the scales of harmonica right yeah, there. Yeah, Bob didn't had one. This guy has like twenty or something. He's, he's got like <laughs> like wow. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Takes yeah. It seriously. They, they come prepared for <laughs> for a show, man. <laughs> it wouldn't be King Gizzard without. Imagine if the harmonica, the one harmonica broke, right? True. Oh my god. Um, yeah, very different. I I tried to give this a name and I put smooth psychedelia. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's much yeah. more psychedelic, but there's a piano in there. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think you know, as Fran mentioned, it's going in the dad rock dimension, and that's yeah, not yeah. so much my cup of tea. Um, mm. I've said cup of tea very often. Maybe it's because I've got an American on. Uh, <laughs> as a, we've got an American on as a guest, and I just feel I'm going extremely British. Uh, not yeah, so we much say cup of me. coffee over here. <laughs> cup of Joe, <laughs> surely, or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it. Right? I, I think same, yeah, same, yeah. same with Slow Jam One as well. I, I didn't dislike a single song on yeah, this playlist yeah. and i could absolutely tell what you were trying to do i think what you've done very well with this playlist is show exactly why they're kind of so amazing because they can just do so many so many different things i yeah, i did like the lyrics yeah, yeah. the lyrics were very fun you know all your money is scared and you're down to betting skins have you heard of a trick called spooking it'll help you win but tricks are just for children and cheating is a sin now you're down to the felt on the table and security's moving in and then there's this mm-hmm. like sneering voice mm-hmm. going oh beginner's luck so I, I quite like the atmosphere that's that's created, but uh, but musically not so much for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's legitimate. Yeah. Um, this one, um, again, this is coming after uh, uh, a couple harder ones. So, um, it's the first track off of uh, this particular album. So. Over underrated. Sous évalué. Il va chance. Over underrated. Um, the next track I got for you guys, though, um, I think is from their most probably probably most loved album by outsiders i think um it's from infest the rat's nest and uh this one came out in 2019 um i think it's it's really uh zeitgeisty since it's talking about uh rich people leaving earth to go to mars uh the album talks a lot about climate change and it even mentions a super bug which um you know we're much more familiar with after 2019 um but yeah this is the one i think is the most kind of just in the vein of what's going on on like the planet and what's going on in in current events um whereas normally they don't really touch on that a whole lot especially well except for the climate change stuff they love that you know they're very big environmentalists with their music yeah, this one I think just hit all the right notes um, and uh, a real throwback to like Black Sabbath and um, earlier uh, metal bands. Yeah, this, this song just goes hard as hell. So um, yeah, I, I was just I'm curious what you guys think of of, of this one. Was um, 2019 the year when it had loads of like bushfires in Australia? That's well, yeah, that's another mm-hmm. connect- yeah, that, yeah, that's something that they're all always witnessing firsthand and they're talking about a lot is just like being in a, a burning wasteland essentially because of climate change. and i think they do a lot for charity and, and a lot of the money went to mm-hmm. the uh, protection of yeah. the wildlife so yeah mm-hmm. it's yeah this is again this is kind of what i thought it's got like maybe more of a led zeppelin riff with like a demon from mars mm-hmm. vocal on top of it um <laughs> this is like i can imagine the soundtrack in some sort of intergalactic space film yeah 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 it's, got like, it's almost got laser guitar sounds at some point um and uh-huh. it's got this really neat bass line that goes way, all the way through it yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure this is this is very much the rock yeah probably the most rock of what they've done maybe there's too many ideas sometimes i thought you were gonna say there's too yeah. much rock. <laughs> maybe maybe sometimes overload too, yeah maybe a bit overload i think i still think that robot stops so far it's my favorite song but yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's enjoyable and like have you seen them live yeah. brad yeah yeah i saw him in 2017 how big a venue did it play unfortunately uh even then it was a pretty big venue okay. so um yeah uh they've i think from the gate when they got to america they were already kind of hitting a uh, big event like that's the thing they're um that's part of the reason they're underrated is that they're not on the charts but they sell out big big shows you know what i mean like they are you know one of the premier like live events right now to see in rock you know so are we talking like 500 people or a thousand people 
Uh, well, they recently played at Red Rocks in Colorado, which is like a huge oh, like yeah. natural amphitheater thing. Uh, I don't know, ten thousand people. I don't Gee. know the numbers exactly, but it was it was uh, you know one of their biggest um, you know shows. Even the show I went to was um, you know in one of the bigger uh, places in uh, Milwaukee, and it was almost filled. So um, yeah, they sell they they sell a lot of uh, uh, for for tickets and shows, and they tour constantly. Quips. So. Can I ask, you know, with people saying that they're, well, I think you included Brad, that they're yeah. the live band of the moment. Why is that? Is it because they put on a show? Is it because their music is already so complex, uh, but they reinterpret it differently live? Yeah. Why, why are you such a big fan of them live as well as so, on the records? Um, they're kind of starting to build a like Grateful Dead or Fish type of um, mm -hmm. a, a backlog of, of live shows. Like it's gotten to the point where people share specific live shows online uh, and talk about specific performances. Um, so uh, in that sense, they're very reminiscent of jam bands and that culture. Um, but uh, what I would say is that they're, they put a lot of attention to detail in um, uh, set lists. Like they, uh, uh, a while back, they did like a week of shows, like night after night, where each night they did a different genre. Um, right now what they're doing is a lot of marathon sets where they're playing like two and a half or three hours mm -hmm. of, of songs that, you know, they've like kind of perfectly weaved together. Um, it's what's, what's great about seeing King Gizzard live is, is it's a completely different show almost every night. Um, yeah. like I'm on the, their subreddit and posting just the set list is like, a regular thing every day people are posting set lists from the new shows and talking about how excited they are for how, like how exactly this set is going to roll out you know um i think that that's the thing is that makes king gizzard exciting is because the, the 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 fan base is very very uh, uh talkative with each other and supportive of one another and it's a really really good fan base as well as you know loving the music so is it not toxic because as you know i am a woman who's been into rock for a very long yeah. time and my my i was scared coming into this that it would be exactly like the very specific nerdy name three songs kind of guys uh -huh. who, who would be into that but it sounds like it's maybe maybe a bit of that but maybe not not that people are open and friendly and, and not well, yeah and and i yeah. would say as far as the fans go um you know there's probably more ma male fans but there is a a large amount of female fans as well in this fan base it's uh it's it's managed to uh elude that kind of stigma that jam mm -hmm. bands always have where it's um and uh, part of the reason is because they are so uh progressive and um you know feminist in their personal lives um and just wholesome guys that aren't trying to be rock stars and aren't trying okay. to uh, uh, act like they're better than other bands, you know. Um, nice. So yeah, I think that their fan base is just one of the best fan bases around. Personally, how do they remember the songs? Like they got twenty five albums. How the hell? <laughs> they must me, literally man. practice. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do practice, but I, I mean, they, they. I, I actually just saw them get asked this question, really? and like they say, like yeah, sometimes you know they'll, they'll they'll mess up a lyric here or there or something, but you know, for the most part, they they you know. Um, they'll, they'll practice backstage. If there's a song they haven't played in a while, they'll like, you know, go over it again. You know, they're, they're hardworking guys as far as, you know, they, because you can see like on, you can see in their faces how much they want to like, Get it right. to, to <laughs> land, to stick the landing on everything. You know, they're, they're not like, they're not show offy at all, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's part of the reason they've, you know, struck a chord with some mm -hmm. people. So yeah, for for this song, I wrote rock and roll, spelt R A W K. Um, same. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> oh god, we're nerds. So this one, right? When when it started, I thought, ooh, this is a bit ACDC, a bit Black Sabbathy. I don't I don't know what I'm going to think about it. But mm -hmm. by the end, I was absolutely sold. I think in part because of that, the way the bass drives the song. You know, it, it starts with this in, in this instrumental bit being very simple, and then it drives the the song and i was like wow that's, yeah, yeah. that's oh, pretty yeah, damn cool boom, 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 just yeah <laughs> doing it better really, than i really could great. i think brad even yeah. if i was uh, <laughs> on bass or with my voice i i love the <laughs> arpeggiated motifs that go throughout the mm -hmm. song and we haven't mentioned the drums but the drums in every oh. single song have been 
exceptional really yeah. um every single time i write down yeah drums are great drums are great drums are great so by the time i went to listen to it a second time and i was primed for okay it's going to be a thrashier sound yeah. i then yeah. enjoyed it but on uh, look, uh, the first lesson i was like oh gosh no maybe this is a bit too dad rocky again but uh -huh. no i i really i really enjoyed it i think like fran i would probably still prefer robot stop uh mm -hmm. but uh but i I enjoyed it. And I think this is a song definitely to, to go and check out the album. Yeah, Nanagana Vidi was one that I, I, I listened to a ton uh, um, the first couple of years of my, my like King Gizzard fandom because that was it, that was what blew my mind open. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is where the drummer is really starting to kind of come into his own. Um, right after this album, the second drummer leaves the band. This is, I think, where he's starting to kind of work his way up to like he's the, the drummer's just been getting better and better and better so like the last three albums that came out last month how'd you find the free time <laughs> well uh i i mostly spent last month listening to king gizzard so <laughs> yeah. do you know the um stereo gum the uh website yeah they yeah. they compared uh um the gizzard to um hello fresh <laughs> so every, every month you get a, a new delivery <laughs> Yeah, there's this uh, there's this famous uh, not famous. There's this meme of of uh, it's Stu, the lead singer, and he's sitting in front of uh, uh, someone uh, uh, giving tarot cards or something, and she's like, "You will make 100 albums in your lifetime," <laughs> and then he's saying, "That oh, seems a bit low, actually." <laughs> um, but yeah, the 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 final track I got for you guys though is uh, one of my favorites of theirs, and. Com brings them to a, a completely different direction than we've we've heard so far. Um, this is from uh, Omnium Gatherum, which is another a compilation type album that they put out, which is you know bits and pieces. Um, but it's uh, I think it's it's from the Butterfly Three Thousand sessions, where an album that has a lot of these kinds of sounds in it uh, start to finish. But uh, oh, also there's a fun story with this one that like. Stu apparently had like a dream about this this mountain, this magenta mountain um, that was like a, a paradise afterlife type thing. He, he, he was trying to convince the bandmate that it was real. It's a place he's going to go one day and like all this other stuff. And that's kind of what the song is about is like trying to to convince people that this place is real and that, you know, it's 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 paradise and things. Um, which is great because normally they're very focused on apocalyptic type stuff, the end of the world, like the world's burning, climate change, you know what I mean? Like they're before a certain album, that's kind of all they were like about, you know. Um, but then Stu had a kid and he decided that he wanted to do some stuff that was a little more positive. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, what do you guys, what do you guys think of this one? So I will say this is my favorite song off the playlist. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's very different. Although what was funny when I saw them do this live, he starts off by saying, "Oh, here's a new one," which can mean yeah. anything, surely. <laughs> like <laughs> new usually means the past year. So what song is that? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then that video is brilliant because um, the cameraman's filming them, and at the end, he then leaves the stage, goes through the audience, and then films yeah. him do a guitar solo, which isn't on this version from the sound booth. Mm -hmm, and the, mm -hmm. the guitar solo is amazing. So I thought, not yeah. only are they playing like these epic sets, they're even adding new elements to each song. It's like where do they get the time mm -hmm, to be so creative? Mm -hmm. But yeah, back to the back to the song. Um, yeah, the vocals a bit more sweet. Um, it's got this really pretty synth line, like an Eastern sort of flavor to it. Um, mm -hmm. I I called it MGMT meets a band Japan, who we've mentioned Ooh. on the podcast yeah. previously. It is very MGMT. They seem sure. more focused um, as a band, and yeah, I, this song kept going around in my head again and again and again. So mm -hmm. out of the five, this is probably more my kind of thing, really. But um, yeah, yeah, it's the album. You said the album is like a. A mix of different songs. So yeah, is this a, yeah, there's another. Is this, a, is this a one off so, kind of synth sound, or do they get back to it? Um, I think they do it a couple times in the album. Okay. But if you like this sound, you would like Butterfly Three Thousand. That entire album is kind of in this mode. Ah, okay, Butterfly Three Thousand. <laughs> this is the thing with King Gizzard. If you like this song, there's a whole album out there for you. <laughs> yeah, that's the great thing about the compilation <laughs> ones. Like, if you do like one of the tracks, it's like, well, you know, they they really expound on it here. Okay, I found my little thread to my little part of the world. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I was surprised to be back in, I called it Tame Impala territory. Mm, Although yeah. there's I, almost hip hop beat drumming is what I thought. I, I thought this, mm-hmm. I'm surprised to have this drum sound with this particular song. And then I read up on it. And apparently this album does have rap songs. It has and two rap songs. It yeah. says the album's rap songs were the result of Mackenzie learning sampling using numerous vinyl records he had purchased on Discogs. Shout out to Discogs. With yeah, Kenny yeah. Smith rapping over them. The Guardian described the experiments as a rare contentious issue within the group. So mm-hmm. I found that very interesting because I guess so far all the influences that we've talked about, they are rock, right? Very, yes. very often yes. rock. But here, here it's something a bit different. I, I was kind of all over the place with this song. So when, when it started, I was like, oh, it's a bit too trippy, but I can admire it. I like the drumming mm. and the voices. But I think the ending again is what shifted it for me i i it go it, it looks like the song is going in another direction it makes it sound very mysterious like where mm. where is it in the track listing on the album is it the opener it's the third track i want to say okay so no, it's not the opener or the closer right so no, it's the first in the track is uh a very long jam like 20 minute jam <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so sad to uh, not have been they're kind of known actually they do that a lot like the first tracks are usually a lot of time uh, uh one of the longest tracks so that's that's kind of a thing with with these guys so i i listened to it twice i didn't really know what i thought uh, thought about it but i can imagine this being a song that after a few more listens or going into the particular universe of omnium gatherum that i might yeah. like it but um for me, of of your playlists, Robot Stop was was the one I enjoyed the most. So that that that's my slice of gizzard, personally. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If I like Robot Stop, I, I should go to Nonagon Infinity, I guess, and and any any yeah. others. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say uh, honestly, if you're gonna do that, you might as well just listen to the next couple albums because okay. that's they kind of um, they the the Nonagon Infinity into like 2017. They use a lot of those similar styles uh, mm-hmm. throughout. Um, and if you want a really, really just freaky sci-fi uh, uh, story that's barely a normal album, Murder the Universe. Of course. Uh, uh, that's, it's basically a science fiction short story. Uh, well, several okay. science fiction short stories, but with music. Okay. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's a weird one, but it's, it's one of their absolute best, I think. Is there a place they haven't been yet, which you're hoping to do? Oh, uh, well, I am hoping that, first of all, they've given us a taste of the rap, oh, and I want an album, okay. I want a full <laughs> album, really bad. <laughs> um, and secondly, I think that I'd like to hear them do kind of a, a pet sounds <laughs> type of thing. I think that um, that's the like they do a lot of really good vocals, but I think that I would love to hear their vocals clear and upfront and and very polished for once, you know, because um, they leave, they they love they love putting distortions and filters on their vocals uh, quite a bit. Um, I mean, a couple of these songs are are, are cleaner, mm-hmm. but um, I'd like to see just a whole album just focused on that. Yeah, well, I mean, I thought on this track his his vocal was quite different. It's just it's more. Yeah. It's just more of his voice. It's just a clean. Yeah, this is vocal. definitely more of his. Yeah. More what he sounds like uh, uh, in his singing voice. Um, but it, it it still has a little bit of fuzz, a little bit of like, you know, distance. You know, because um, they 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 often mix they often mix the vocals to be like the same level as the instruments, which is you know because mm-hmm. they res- they respect all parts of the music. But I don't know. I'd love to see them do like a just one poppier kind of production on an album i'm sure they get to it if they're gonna make another hundred albums yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, they, they have to it's like the infinite oh, monkey. and maybe uh, uh maybe southern and uh, um uh, southern american rock or southern oh, okay. american inspired music because like they're i feel like in order to do that right you kind of have to spend a lot of time in the american south to, to fully absorb the <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> but those are my hopes for for king gizzard and uh I obviously think they're underrated. If, uh, if you're was, asking, what else I ask? Yeah, underrated. Fran, where where would you place them? I mean, I, I enjoyed the players, so I shall have to say they're underrated. Although it sounds like they sell quite a lot of tickets, so I don't know how underrated they are. But I, but yeah, I as guess far as shows go, yeah. yeah but I mean, rated. I, I mean, I don't hear them on the radio. 
you don't, you don't hear from on TV. Yeah. The average person mm-hmm. probably wouldn't know who they are. So in that case, yeah, yeah. underrated. Of course. Except for a friend at a party mentioned <laughs> them, <was> talking <laughs> about them. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, more people will know who Jet are than this band. So yeah, mm-hmm. I guess underrated in that case. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I loved the playlist as well, and like I said, I didn't dislike any. But when I saw that they had 1.9 million monthly listeners, I thought, hmm. Can you really call them underrated? I think, as you said, Fran, the fact that they're very clearly a cult band, right? They're very clearly a cult band for for culty, nerdy people, and that's fine. Um, (laughs) And I I, I think that's that's us in in a way. Like, uh, I'm new to Reddit, but uh, I think if I had been, if Reddit had been around when I was a teenager, my God, would I have been on the radio headside Reddit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I would say that they're underrated in that, yeah, you wouldn't know what one of their songs sounded like if you didn't know what kind of band they were right like you said like they're they're Mm -hmm. not on the radio yeah um and they're underrated because i think there is a king gizzard out there for everyone that's what i feel it's like we all we all liked different types of of king gizzard like spice girls (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah of course yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're sporty i'm baby mm-hmm. uh no um <laughs> they're the spice girls of rock <laughs> the spice girls of rock. you heard it here first i, I actually can absolutely guarantee you heard it here first <laughs> that's actually not a bad description for them honestly i'm gonna bring that to the subreddit <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i hope you, you you know you give it you give us the credit <laughs> so i I think I will reluctantly say that they're underrated, not because I don't think they're brilliant. I think they, I I can't wait now to get my teeth stuck in and Mm -hmm. go and listen to Nana Gun Infinity and go back and listen to the songs that I saved. Mm -hmm. I I now feel I have an in and knowing the songs that I liked more and I liked less, you know, it doesn't have to be a band where I have to go and listen to all their albums. I can go and listen to the ones that, that I like. So I will say that they're underrated because I don't think I've ever had a, a conversation with a person in real life about them like it's been yeah people on the internet basically so mm-hmm. so yeah with some with some reluctance because they're obviously very well loved and have a lot of listeners but they are clearly a brilliant band they are underrated mm-hmm. yeah yeah your work Fantastic. here has done thank you thank you <laughs> yes i'm glad that i could could share uh, uh some king gizzard with you guys <laughs> always always happy to do that thank you for holding our hands today uh brad and taking us through through the world yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah but yeah so brad no um obviously we would like to give you the space to tell us more about yourself and uh yeah. if there's anything you'd like to plug uh well um yeah i would say uh go over to the album concept hour uh, podcast and just uh scroll through our list of of albums we'll probably have uh much like king gizzard we'll probably have something that you appreciate um because yeah, everyone does a concept album at some point um so uh yeah yeah i would just say yeah go through find one what one thing that either you love already and uh want to find out more about or one album that maybe you have no understanding of and then you know see if i can change your understanding of that because um yeah we really like to to dive deep uh they're usually around an hour and a half to two hours because that's seems to be how long it takes uh but uh other than that i would say um i have a a new music movie um youtube show um and we have uh, two episodes out right now Uh, the first one is about the life and times of chris Gaines, and the second one is uh, a a video that was like an hour of david lee roth being crazy essentially (laughs) and we watched that and uh reacted to that uh so uh yeah yeah i'm always i'm always doing some random music stuff and uh what's your youtube channel name oh yeah uh flyover state park um we, we wisconsin is uh a flyover state right uh, okay. according to the, the new york and california because they fly over us and that's about all they know uh so <laughs> i'm trying to reappropriate flyover state park um and uh yeah yeah uh thank you so much for for having me on guys this has been a this has been a blast yeah thank, thank you. you very much for for coming on brad and uh fran any final thoughts for today um you know get some gizzard inside you yeah. um yeah <laughs> i'm hoping they play next year in uk i guess i've not been there for a while um so it'd be nice to I maybe think they have some shows planned for london right now do they have time to tour given how many <laughs> albums they're recording is is my question like how do you decide <laughs> okay guys know. we need to stop recording now <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man i don't know <laughs> i don't know if they, i don't know if they have time for anything but music but they have families and shit too so it's like yeah 
Uh, I don't know. Very impressive. May you have a lovely day, evening, wherever you are, and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. And so there we have it, the uh, Australian. That's a terrible accent. Episode with Brad. Um, thanks again, Brad, for coming on the podcast. That was a lot of fun. And uh, since the record, King Gizzard have announced they're playing the end of the Road Festival in Dorset. So I might pop along and check them out. So if you did enjoy this episode, please subscribe, like, share to people, and all that jazz. We are on the social media. We are OU Music Pod on Twitter. Over underrated music pod on Instagram, and we are also on YouTube now. So, see you all there. Until next time, bye bye.